Almost afternoon. They have a good weekend. Ready for uh, Thanksgiving? I'm going to bump into that thing. Turn off my music up here. Don't forget on Wednesday. So don't come. Don't come on Zoom either. You know, it's an opportunity for us to work more harder someplace else without you. Oh. So you're really not involved. <laughs> all right. And we're off all next week, right? Yes, all next week. All week, you're off. So we're trying to get things. I was trying, if you notice, with due dates, trying to get it to where you didn't have any work, kind of overlapping Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, we just can't do it because we've got to get our array stuff in. So we're trying to get our lecture part of that done today and as much of our collab document as we can. And then you'll have to, we'll have to just kind of see how much you can do on your own. I think you'll be in pretty good shape with it. And after arrays, we have a couple more topics, but they're kind of just like things to introduce you to, you know, not necessarily things you're going to do a lot of projects on or anything like that. So this is kind of our, our last chapter. And the way that they scheduled the Explore OTC this semester ended up getting us on our Wednesday before Thanksgiving. What a terrible schedule. Ah, I don't think they realized, you know, this is the only day we can do it. Okay, but they didn't think, well, now that means those classes that meet on Monday and Wednesday aren't going to see each other for two weeks, right? Because really, so we have a long time. It'll be two weeks before I see you again. So we'll be working on arrays. In the meantime, I know you have some things hanging on your head that you're worrying about, like your unit exam. I'm going to do like the real world people and make you switch track, switch focus, and make your poor brain think about something else and then get back to it, which is a really hard thing for some people in our field. I know it's kind of hard for me. When I get really involved in working on a project, it's kind of hard to switch track. So sometimes we just have to do it. Now, our first thing we're going to do today is present the quest. Now, we have several groups. So for each group, I just want one. We might have splittage within our groups. You know, sometimes we have some, some veering off and people doing things on their own. That's fine as far as submitting them. Submit them all because I can see all the different versions that were submitted. And then I can kind of, you know, determine what happened there. But for our presentation, we, we don't have time to see them all. So in, a, in your group, you're going to have to decide which one is going to be pre presented by your group. Because I will tell you what, I have seen some programmers who I couldn't get a word out of edgewise. I could see them every day and say, good morning. How are you? How was your weekend? Did you have a good day? Are you going to have fun this weekend? And they'll just like ignore me, not say a word. I don't know if you know that, but I like those kind of students. One of my favorite students ever, I nicknamed him Silent Matt because I had him for like three years and he never spoke. You know, that's, that's something that you can think of as kind of a good quality in a person, depending on what you're working with him on. He did speak if he had problems, so it was good. But you can 
take those quiet, silent people and let them explain to you their code, and all of a sudden, they can talk for three hours. And they can say, and then I had a problem, and I decided to use this Boolean, and so I had to do all of these changes and run it around. And that's good because people should be that proud of their code. And I do like it when people are so proud that they can explain it for a really, really long time. But we don't have that much time. So as we go through and look at each group's quest, what we would probably like to see, and of course I'll let the group kind of guide it, but what we would probably like to see is we would like to see your application running so we can see how it works. And then we would like to see your code because we'd like to know, is it a big old spaghetti bowl of code or is it some nice clean code with different functions that everybody could learn from and enjoy. Either one works, right? We don't have to worry about it. It's just sometimes it's easier to eat that neat stuff. I'm gonna let this last person in. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes just to talk to your group to decide who's gonna speak, whose monitor or whose computer is gonna take over the Zoom session to present the application and the code. You know, how are you guys gonna split up these responsibilities so that we can see your application? Now we do have a group or two that might not be all the way done. That's okay. Show us your progress, where you are, what your plans are. So we each need a copy of uh, our class. Do I? So do each of us need a copy of our class? No, just decide who's going to present it and who's going to talk. So you might want one person to drive and another to talk. That's fine. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I was trying to get your in your attendance too. You got to realize every day you make me go redo that. I don't mind, but I do mind when you're ha at going, wait, I need you. <laughs> no, it's because of you. <laughs> Just running around. Everybody ready? I'm so excited to see them. You guys have just done such a great job. I'm going to quit sharing. Let's start up here with group one. They've got some good support here. They don't mind leading it off for us. Now, when you guys take over the session, please zoom in for us a little bit so we can see that code at a more reasonable size. And you can just control wheel, control scroll to zoom in on collab. So it's pretty easy. Oh, beautiful. You guys want to show us running? All right, so um, you just got some random um, locations here. Um, I'm going to choose three, and then we got like a story for each uh, location, and you can choose to grab the item or not. And so I believe this one was the um, nameplate. So for each like, um, it depends on the length of your name. It just completely surrounds it. So, yeah. I, I get to be yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> do you guys want to see them run it some more, some more of their options? Do you guys want me to do like all of it or 
let's just see a couple, whatever you think is a good demo. So, um, we had a uh, gym, a coin and a chalice and then the uh, name plate. I like your narrative too. <laughs> okay, you better see that awesome code. All right. Okay. So um, we had a few functions. I mean, quite a bit, like six, I think. Yeah. Um, for the intro, we just um, set the uh, name and the um, lucky number and then printed them. Uh, the location, this is for each of the four locations we had. So uh, for one, it was a forest, for two, it was a desert, uh, for three, it was a city, and for four, that was the um, random country. The very creative locations. <laughs> And then um, if it was either greater than four or less than one, then you had to enter a um, valid number because, yeah. So, um, and then for each of the items, we had a function where it would um, explain the location and then prompt you to grab the item or not, and then print out the, um, the item. So that was for. Are you guys noticing how their functions are all real similar, real consistent? Isn't that nice? I mean, you go through their program, you would be able to update it fairly easily. You would be able to find what you need. It was just done in a really consistent manner. So did you guys, were you able to split up some of the responsibilities then since you did your different functions so well? Any questions for them? What do you think? No questions? Questions? Give them a hand then. Good job. Really good. I think it just came out great. I think that it's very, very maintainable. Group two. <laughs> Let's say you guys are group two. <laughs> we just made you group two. <laughs> <laughs> At least for this moment. Okay, zoom in on that thing. Control scroll. Okay. So, um, we haven't finished yet, we're in progress. But um, here's our quest code. So, first, it's just prompting for the character to put in their name. And then uh, we have a uh, random number generator that determines the lucky number. And then, next, we have a menu of the uh, different countries where they can search and what is found in each country. And then down here we have um, this is where the character prompts or where the character inputs where they want to search. And so wherever they want to search, we will um, tell them what they found there, which is just what they found up here. And uh, that's all we have right now. But we run it. Uh, so it tells. You're lucky number is three. Diamonds, gold, and silver are your available options. Nigeria, diamonds are Nigeria, all that. So we'll say Nigeria. Three. And then you found diamonds. Fancy. And then, like, if you put like a, something that's not there, we'll just say try again. That's what we got so far. Good. Um, it, will you show everybody that treasure chest, your treasure chest variable? Um, here where the treasure chest variable is, we have this great tutoring center 
and they are really awesome, you guys. But whenever Jenny went over there, they started showing them how to do this problem using a raise. And we haven't used a raise yet. So that's why it's not done all the way. So whenever you go and ask for help like that, it's such a hard situation because you're asking for help because you, you're not, you know, you want some help. But if you go into a situation like that and you see some code that you've never seen before, ask about it. You could be right. It might be something that you should know and you just have no idea what they're talking about. That could be, but probably not. Probably the tutor might be talking about something that you haven't been shown yet. Because remember, they're learning, you know? And so the tutor, one of the hardest things being a teacher is remembering what it's like to not know something. Because you know, once you know something, it's really hard to remember what it was like to not know it. It's part of you now. So at the tutor, tutoring center, that tutor didn't even remember what it was like to not know about a raise. That's something that he would have to really have been forced to think about. So that's okay. You'll just need a little bit more time because we're going to talk about a raise today. But it sort of is a hard thing. So, so I know that's why it can be a risk to go to a, the tutoring center. So I appreciate so much you guys doing that and going ahead and taking that plunge, you know, if you feel like you need to. Because we're going to get caught up and it's all going to come together. And that tutoring is going to be really, really helpful. But at first, sometimes when it first gets started, it can cause us a little bit of trouble. So let's give them a super big hand. They're making great progress. I'm really excited about seeing this one, and we'll be able to see something that uses a raise right away. Okay, guys, take it. Zoom in. All right. Okay. So uh, we did things a little bit differently. We each made our own four paths today. Um, I'm not sure the board actually has to have to do For this first uh, path, I tried using a four loop to the best of my ability. I don't. I still have a long way to go on four loops, um, but it picked out a nice little gym. Um, and then we have a little sword here. We got our plaque to go. We used the squig function. Um, got a chop in here. Logan was the most creative, and he put riddles and stuff in his, which was a fun to test. <laughs> um, got another plaque here. Let's see it running. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, what's all this cool stuff? <laughs> um, so this is my little island. And then we get our little sword here. Finding a group of indigenous people. And then it's mine again for some reason. Kind of shocked by we're looking for food. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, here's Reese's because uh, yeah, we got a nice little gym here. Something That's really that neat. I think we had honestly was just getting the ASCII art to work, but we were able to figure it out using a combination of methods. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a lot to see here. <laughs> so do you have functions or is everything pretty much straight top down code, which is fine? Um, it's pretty much just straight down. And so then you guys just work together to integrate everything. Yeah, we kind of work on our own paths and just put it all together. Mm -hmm. And the way that we have things kind of lined up, we could have, could have probably just easily just put it in with those modules instead of uh huh. Because the you know we have uh, questions or point one two three four and each of those could have gone into their own module. We just isn't that neat seeing how in just two weeks you evolved so much. Now you know how to do that. But when we started, you didn't. One that I want to point out to everybody: here's some for loops, getting some borders printed and things like that. 
because our ASCII art, we wanted to practice doing for loops. So gives us an opportunity to try some things, different, different stuff there. Anything else you want to really show us that took some time? Don't, don't say just a happy art. <laughs> <laughs> Getting everything in there. I love it. Give him a hand, you guys. Did a great job. Do we have group four? Yay. Oh, nice. Look at this notebook book all set up. Woohoo. So we've got Zoom in for us. Sure, Beautiful. Every, uh, with at least one SDR in every module I did. Wow. I'll just go through what I did. I did a lot. So. My very impressive statue. <laughs> That's really cool. And, and I didn't know what to do, so I had a loop. Oh, really cool. <laughs> the bear one. <laughs> That's really nice. The hardest part was just get the spacing because I couldn't be so satisfied with just copy printing with the bulk print. So I just went through and print every little step with a happy uh, loop. Oh, that's really good. I think you've got a lot of practice. With four loops, that's for sure. Everybody's just in amaze, amazement going, we need to play it. We need to play it. <laughs> I can hear them all in their thoughts going, oh, we need to play it. Give them a hand. Woohoo! That was awesome. Group five. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so good. All right, so this is our program. Um, it's just a simple go to this location to get some random loop type thing. Show it to you real fast. 
And then I'll display a random, random blue item that we created uh, for loops. And then you can do yes or no if you want to play the game. And if you don't type in yes exactly, um, it doesn't want to play again, I guess. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it was it was a really fun project. Um, I found it really interesting that when I was when we were trying to create the gym, we had a couple of failures that were able to use as loot items. Neat. Nice. We created like a boomerang and a crown while while trying to make the gym. But it was. That's great. Sometimes we find the best things looking for something else, right? Oh yeah, and like you got the like the plaque to be able to like stretch as far as you want, however long your name is. That's that's pretty neat. And then did you? Use global variables, or did you change it? Uh, we just use global variables. Uh huh. And that works well. Yeah. Is that good enough for everybody? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So. And then with your plaque, let's take a look at those calculations. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know you went and um, figured out the the good mathematical way to handle that. Uh, okay. Um. So for the plaque, I decided I want the default length to be 24. And then I said, you know, if your character's name is going to be longer than 24 characters long, it's going to put the plaque up into two plots. And then, oh gosh, it's been a while, sorry. That's OK. But yeah, um, basically the map just calculates how many spaces you need or how many. Oh, I see. You're taking the length of their name and subtracting that from your 24. Yeah. And then dividing by two to see how many um, characters to to print out on either side yeah, of the right. center, basically. Yeah, so even if you've got like an even number name or an odd number name, uh -huh. you've got that. It'll take care of it. Yeah, I think that's great. And of course, Tim has really good comments. So if he was down under pressure, he could figure out what it did. Because <laughs> those comments will help a lot. Beautiful code. Give him a hand. I think it just came out great, you guys. Really, really good. Group six. Nice. Sure. What you bring? I want to share with your students. Oh no, I had no idea. Um, today is exciting. I am delivering pins and certificates. For those employees who have been here for five years. And so I just wanted to say thank you and uh, please uh, give your teacher some recognition. <laughs> <laughs> we are so happy to have her. She does such a great job. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for the job that <laughs> you do. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> and there you go. Thank and there's you your so much. And thank you for letting me take just a couple minutes sure. with you last time. <laughs> Fancy. Thanks, you guys. Okay. Now we're ready to see this thing. Let's go. I didn't know for sure who she was when she came in the door. <laughs> that would be my boss that I've seen like twice. <laughs> 
Isn't that terrible with the mask and everything? Oh, I love it. Okay, so what's going on here? They're voting on Middle Earth up here in the front. Nothing. We just get to see that flat. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> hey, rubber duck. Yay. <laughs> oh, look at that array. So he used the list too. What else you got going on in there? What am I going to gripe at them about? You can't see it? Huh? Huh? No comments. No comments. It's beautiful. And so. Okay, well, to be fair, um, we had uh, at the very last minute, we had to make a copy of this because one guy, uh, one of our guys was, wasn't on Zoom. He wasn't here. So we had to start off. We no, had not had to start over, but had to do so put some up at the top. Don't worry about it. I oh, just yeah. wanted to mention it. Oh, they do have them at the top, so they're yeah. good. I would I would not stripe at them then. So we've got some. I just didn't see any as you scrolled on by. You're just so fast. Any questions? I like the way that they notice how they used multiple random numbers to make decisions in the game kind of alter the flow, which is kind of fun. And you don't know what's going to happen as often. Great, give him a hand. Now I know we have a couple of people at home who might want to show anything. Does anybody from the home audience have anything they want to show? Well, that's all right. We don't have very many people at home today. So let me take over. No problem. Okay. Looking at our modules, we're in week 13. And you can kind of see stuff on my screen that you can't on yours. Don't worry about it. We're just focused on week 13 here. The chapter seven review questions that are in that um, spreadsheet document, the auto grader thing with the raise is getting even, it's getting harder and harder to set things up that can be reasonably auto graded. So you'll see fewer questions in that set. Be sure to look through some of the questions that aren't necessarily asked there and kind of challenge yourself, you know, um, as to what would be the right answer or not. I'm going to grab this PowerPoint, the Array Structures by Riley. Let's take a look at that one. The other one is your textbook presentation, and you're welcome to look at it, especially as you go through the CoLab document. It'll be quick, though. Somewhere 
whenever I first started using this classroom, I didn't have the new PowerPoint on. I'm still not just, I'm just not being able to tell it. To do the word, sorry, talking to myself, but it's supposed to do that, you know, where it um, displays what I'm saying. We're going to look at array structures either way, whether it'll do it the way I want it to or not. Array structures are just variables. Sometimes we have variables, and you guys have seen that in the in your quest. We might have treasures, and we might have treasure one, treasure two, treasure three, treasure four, treasure five. And if we could keep just a list of treasures, it would make it a lot easier for us. And that's what array structures let us do. They're just variables that hold repeating data. So they let us more efficiently save our information. In most programming languages, including Python, the array has to be allocated before it can be used. So the programming language needs to know this is going to be a list. This variable is special. So let's think about variables and data. We could have a variable named PCT that hold a person held a percentage, and it could hold a value, say, of 25. We could have another one, a variable named age, and it has a value of 5. We could have another variable named name, and it holds a value of Joe. So I think you guys have a really good understanding of variables and how the variable has an identifier, which is its unique name, and then it can have a value. We know that the data type of our value determines what kind of values we can have, numbers, floats, strings, things like that. Our payment variable here could be a float, holds a number that has a decimal place. We could have even a Boolean that just has a value of true or false, like is valid. So lots and lots of different variables that we could have. But if we want to have a whole collection of data, we want to use a list. This line of code in Python, name equal open square bracket, close square bracket, actually creates an empty list named name. So Python knows already just from that line of code that that variable name contains an array. Those square brackets. Our square brackets are kind of a key for us that we're working with a list or an array. Here's one. Now, oftentimes when you see an array printed out in a textbook or something, they'll have it going across, like a big old row, and that's fine too. For some reason, my brain thinks of it more as a column because that's kind of really what it's like. It's like a column in Excel because here I have this list of names, 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 and here's what's inside my list. I can see my list is Joe, Bill, Tammy, Vera, and Austin. Well, within that list, the system needs to have a way to identify each of those items in the list. You know, are we looking for Joe or are we looking for Vera? So whenever we're working with an array, an index is assigned to each value in the list. So looking at this display here, our list has Go, Bill, Tammy, Vera, and Austin in it. But each of those names within our name list has been assigned an index value, like a pointer. So the index value zero points to Joe. Index value one points to Bill. Index value two points to Tammy. And we can see how those different unique index values are associated with a certain value in our list. Our indexes, when we're working with programming, we always start counting at zero. So it's just a thing for us. So looking at this list, this array, how many entries does it have? Five. What's the highest index that would be valid? 
set it forward, right? Because if I went to five, there isn't one of those. It would say, you're out of range. I don't know what you're talking about. And the lowest index I could have is zero. If I ever went negative, again, it wouldn't know what I was talking about. So in this array named name, we have said this thing has a size of five, valid index values are zero through four. Whenever we look at Tammy, that index value is two. The pointer that points to Tammy has a value of two, right? That's how we know to find Tammy in our list. So if I were wanting to find that particular value, I could refer to it this way. The name of our array, name, followed by the index value within the square brackets. And that tells me I'm looking at the name array, I'm looking at the item with the index value two. Now, if I wanted to change that from Tammy to new name, I could have a line of code like this. Name at the index location two is now equal to this new name. When I ran that line of code, that value would change. And now my array would show new name instead of Tammy in that location. What about this array? This array we named age. So down at the bottom of the slide, we have the Python code that goes along with this array. How many entries are in this list after this line of code runs? What do you think? Good guess. We actually are ending up with five. And I can tell because whenever I set up an array, I can actually declare it with initial values. And that's what this line of code is doing. I could only run this line of code once because this is setting up my age array. So when I set up my age array here in Python, I'm saying age is a list. That's why it's got square brackets. And the items in the list are 1 and 45 and 29 and 24 and 14. So those are the items in my age array. So if I wanted to print out the value of age with an index of four, I would be printing out this last one, right? 14. So here's our code. Doesn't quite match, does it? This first one doesn't. So I've done something to mess that one up. That one should be one, 45, 29, 24, and 14. So imagine that first one is one like it should be. <laughs> if we printed out the item at index entry four, we would print out 14. If we printed out the item at index entry zero, we would print 16 or one, depending on which example we're looking at. And if we printed out age subscript five, we would get a value out of range. Let's try it. Let's find a good old idle screen. Let me see if I can get it. I'm gonna see if I can find I idle. PY and I see idle. You can't see it, but I'm going to run it. And I just want idle because I just want to try this real quick. I get too involved. So since I've got idle open, if you can remember how to find it, I searched for Python. And when I searched my start menu for Python, idle showed up as one of my options. Now that I've got idle open, I'm going to create a new file. So file 
new window, I guess. They've changed it. And then I want to put in some code here. This is going to be a quick array. So in our code, we said age equals one. Let me fix this to where it's a little bigger. There we go. One comma 45 comma 29 comma 24 and 14. And then if we print all of our age array, you'll see that Python will just print the whole, all of the entries and it'll print the opening and closing square brackets along with it. So let's try it. I'm going to run it. Save it. I'll just save it as chapter seven, small array. And I just wanted to run it so that you could see how it will print out that array. And it looks just exactly the same as the list does when we first defined it. Now, if we want to print out a specific entry in that array, like the entry with the index value four, we can specify that index value. So notice how our variable age can be extended now. Instead of just the variable name, we can include square brackets to indicate which item in the list we're referring to. I'll run it again. And you should see that the second print gives us our 14. Now let's print our age array at index location five, which is outside the bounds of our array. So let's see what that error looks like when we do that. So we'll see an error that tells us that our index was out of range. And that can happen because if we make a small mistake in a for loop and we're trying to process an array, but our for loop counter has gotten a one too high or something, we can have that out of range error occur for us quite often. So that's just some sample code for you to create an array. Let's put that comment in there. Allocate and initialize the age array. And then we can print the entire array or print selected entries. And I didn't save my file with a .py. I must be using an old version of idle because it didn't add it for me automatically because I see no color coding. Now I've got it. <clears throat> Okay, so that just gives us some really quick sample code that we can use. This array was just numbers that we saw with that previous example. We could have names, strings, dates, any kind of data type that we needed to use. Now, a couple of things while we're looking at this picture. First of all, when the array is set up in memory, the reason that visuals always show array side by side is because they have to be in continuous or contiguous memory locations. That means if I create an array, allocate an array that has a million entries to hold my 950,000 employees, I have to have that much memory available on my system that I'm running this application on continuously. 
It cannot be broken up because of other applications or programs using some RAM. So we have to be careful sometimes. We just need to be aware that we will use that continuous amount of memory. Now, in this picture, the indexes are shown at the top. Those are in memory only. Those aren't something that we can affect, right? They're just gonna be set automatically by the system depending on how many entries there are in the array. The value, however, is what we can update. So we can change the value of each entry in our list. So this array is also being initialized because we're giving it values to start with. We have the name of our array and its initial values. And all of those initial values are within those square brackets separated by commas. That list determines the size of the array. Now, in this example, which number would we be referring to when we refer to age at index location three? 24, because we have to start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, exactly. Now, whenever we are wanting to save an array entry, we could set up a variable. And in this case, we're gonna set that variable equal to that value held by that third position of our array. Our pointer is always within square brackets. And in this example, we're gonna update that array entry like we did with the name one earlier. Here, we wanna update index locations two, zero, one, two, which is a value of 29 to be a value of 28. So we say using the age variable at index location two, assign the value of 28. We give it our array name, our index pointer within the square brackets, and then our new value after the equal sign. Now, oftentimes when we're working with an array, we need to check all of the values. We will call that walking the array, traversing the array, different terminology that different programmers use. But here we have our age array again, and this time it does match up. We have our initialization variable where we say set the age equal to this list of values. And then we're gonna go into a for loop. This for loop though is a little bit different than the for loops we've seen before. This is called a for each loop. So we say for this variable in our list. So for each thing in our age list, we can print out that item. Here's the output. Let's fix our program to do that. Get back to my idle. And let's add a for each loop for each loop to print all of the entries. So for x in our age loop, we can print each x. <clears throat> I'm gonna add a print statement before that. Our for each loop follows so we know what we have going on here. Let's try it. Oops, I didn't fix that one, huh? Let's get rid of that one that's causing us trouble. Out of bounds. Now the for each loop will just give us each item in our list individually. So we should see our for each loop follows and then each value that's within our list printed out. You see that? Hard to get idle to cooperate with me on that screen. So you should see that. So that for loop gives us a whole nother capability. So in this example, our for loop doesn't have the range parameter at all. It's a little different. So instead of the range, we're giving it a list. And when it looks at that list, it says, oh, you wanna do a for each loop to process each item in the list. 
instead of a range of values. Okay. Now, one thing I've got to show you this awesome animation. You know, PowerPoint's not so good at that. Let me back up so I can show it to you. Whenever we're traversing or walking the array, when we do our for each loop, it's ignoring the index, right? We're just seeing the value. So the for each loop says, oh, number one, that's 45. Index location two, that's 29. So we don't actually get an opportunity to see that index value in our for each loop as we're walking through traversing the array. We just see the values. That could be an important point to us because the for each loop is just basically hiding those from us. So we might have to do some additional calculations or something if we want to know those index positions because it's, it's keeping that pointer internal and we're only seeing the value. That's how the for each is working. So it's kind of limiting what we see, just one item each time. Okay, so our for each loop syntax is the for keyword. The in keyword specifies that we're looking at our list, and then we have to specify the name of a variable to hold each entry in the list within the for loop. Finally, after the in keyword is the name of our list that tells the for each that it's working with a list. All right, whenever we are working with arrays, we might need more information than what we can hold in one. If you notice so far, my name array only held names and my age array only held ages. Well, I might want to have age information for these people. So I could have what's called a parallel array. And this picture really shows an example of two arrays that are working in parallel. This array says the person's name. This array says the person's age. They're matched up. So if I'm looking at index location three, I'm looking at Vera, and I can say Vera is 24, because these arrays are working together. So in my code, I'm gonna have to keep them in sync, make sure that they stay together, stay in parallel. So if I'm looking at index location zero, I'm talking about Joe who's 16, one would give me Bill. So we're basically referring to these two arrays as though they are working together. There's no magic in our programming language to help that happen. That's us, we have to make sure that that happens within our code. Now in Python, they really don't call them arrays, they call them lists. So anytime you're working with Python, you might wanna be searching for the keyword list. Over the last couple of years, because so many programming programs are using Python as intro stuff, and arrays are important in all languages, you'll see it a lot more now. So it, it was kind of a big deal there at first. We couldn't find anything about arrays because it all said lists. So the arrays or lists allow us to manipulate repeating data elements efficiently. And we can use them with looping structures because the index kind of lends itself to looping. We can use the for each statement to process all of the entries in a given array. And now we're gonna create some practice programs to work with different data types, values, and conditions. Let's try it. There's so much that we could do working with arrays. That's the great thing about getting into programming as a field. There's always so much stuff to learn. It's always exciting if you get bored with something, you can always move on and learn something else or try to figure out a different way to do it. And then if you don't feel like it being exciting and finding a different way, you can just use the same old way. So I'm gonna open our CoLab notebook on week 13. And when I find this link, I'm gonna save this thing, a copy for me. So go to your file menu and save a copy in Drive. And I'm gonna get my copy created here. Everybody finding it okay? <laughs> I 
Now up here at the top, I've got a little code block, so I could actually copy my code from our idle program into that code block just to have it. So no big deal. And it was just our little samples about working with arrays. So I'll keep it in my collab document before my introduction for this chapter. Now, when we look at arrays and lists, some of the things that we need to know how to do our objectives are to declare them and use them. So, so far we've seen in Python how to declare them and how to initialize them in a little bit on how to use them, but we need more practice. We've seen that parallel arrays could be really important. At the end of the chapter, after we get back from Thanksgiving, we want to talk about how these arrays can kind of lead us into databases. We want to think about how all of our strings are really just an array of characters. Use the length of to find out how long a character array is, which you've already used. And then at the very end, we could consider using two-dimensional arrays. They're not used very often, though. Okay, so for the example 7.1, entering elements in an array, we saw in our code that we did how we could set up an array with initial values in Python. But what if we want a prompt for initial values from our user? Well, that's what this code will give us. So let's take a look at it. It's here for you because it would just be kind of difficult to create that first time looking at that pseudocode. So if we look at that pseudocode, the only difference we see for an array is that they're using the square brackets by the variable name. So they don't get, we don't have all these, all sorts of new, then create this fake syntax type instructions for pseudocode for arrays. It's just, we're gonna use square brackets to show you that there's an index. So for this first example, the pseudocode is prompting the user to enter a score, and then it's keeping that score in the next array entry. We're using k as our index value, and we're updating k with every iteration of our for loop so that we can ask for a value, save it in our scores array at index location k. So here we can do the same thing in Python in a couple of different ways. And actually we could do it in a few other ways if we wanted to. This first little cell is Python doing the code. So line number one sets up a variable named scores. In Python, I could just say equals square brackets and that would declare it as an array. But I wanna tell Python that I'd like to have 25 entries that's what this pseudocode said. Our array is gonna have 25 entries. So I can do that using this code here. Set up the scores array with a cell with a value of zero and make there be 25 of them. So I've just basically said this, this array has 25 entries and each of those entries should have, start with a value of zero. Now we're gonna go into a for loop and in this for loop, we're using k as our index, and we're using a range loop. So we're gonna run this loop for k equals zero, all the way up to k equal to 25, or 24. For each execution of our for loop, we're gonna prompt for a score, and we're gonna input that value into our array. Let's copy this little teeny bit of code and run it in the Python Tutor site. I'm gonna copy that cell. I wanna to go to the Python Tutor site and paste it. Try running it here. I'm gonna start out allocating my scores array so let's see how it does it. Whoa, there they are. That's pretty cool, huh? 
So here's my 25 entries in my scores array. They're all set to zero. Now I'm going to go into my for loop. This is going to run 25 times. So I'll probably end up canceling it before it gets done the whole way. We could change it to be a little bit less annoying. But let's click next for the first execution of our loop. We're using a variable named k. So as we start out, k gets set to zero. And we're going to print out this message, enter score. And now we're ready for some user input. So I'll put in 12. Now, notice in line four what's going to happen here. When it reads that 12, it's going to place the value 12 into my scores array at the entry pointed to by variable k. So actually, this very first one. I'll submit. We should see our value of 12 go into that array. Now I'm going to keep executing my loop again. k is now going to be equal to 1. I'll type in a score, about 24, submit it, and I should see that go into that position. I can keep executing this loop until my mind goes numb, or until it starts making sense. And just keep trying it. We should be seeing those entries get popped into our array as we go. Everybody's working okay? See them get popped in there. I'm gonna click edit this code. And if I wanna change it, I could change it to five. Let's see, I'll change this to five and I'll change this to five. I've gotta get it in both places, right? Or else I'm gonna have an error. But then I can run it and it won't be as much as 25 because 25 is a lot. Now when we see our scores array get allocated, oh, it's nice and cute. It's just got five entries now. We'll go into our for loop. It'll prompt us for a score, put in a number. There we go. And we could go through and keep getting all of our entries in there. So we get our array all full. Beautiful. Now, if you look back at your collab document, there's another example right below. And in this example, we do things in a little bit more Pythonic way. So looking at it, see why it's Pythonic. We say score is a list. I'm just giving it the empty square brackets that tells us a list. Then we go into the for loop and prompt for a score. But instead of using k is our, whoops, I've got a typo there. Hang on, let's, let's fix it. We shouldn't have append k there. We should have append whatever they type in, input have an error, so make sure you fix yours. So we're asking them for a score, whatever they type in, we're gonna append to our array. So let's run this one in the visualizer. I'm gonna copy that cell. It's gonna, you're gonna see that it's a little different. I'm gonna edit my code and paste in this code that does the append instead of using the index. <clears throat> now let's visualize it. First of all, when Python allocates our array, we're not giving it a size. So it doesn't know how big to make it. It just says it's an empty list. Now we go into our for loop. K is zero. We ask for a score. I'll put in 23. Now, when we do the append, we'll see now we have an item in our list. Now I can keep nexting, and I'll put in another one. And in this example, notice how we're doing the same thing, 
It's just a little different because instead of using a pre-allocated array and an index value, we're using the array function append to add new data into our array. So notice how that syntax is a little bit different, but it gives you the same capability. So in our CoLab document, I wanted to give you those two examples so you could see what you can run into when you're Googling stuff for working with a list with Python, because a lot of times you'll only be able to find things that use the array functions like that append. In our book, our prelude to programming book, since we're talking about constructs that work in any programming language, it focuses more on using things with the index value than using the function. So we can see that little bit of difference. But I want you to get to the point where you see the similarities and you can see the differences so that you could decide which way would work best for you given a certain situation. Okay, we're gonna forge ahead here. For example, 7.2, when it rains, it pours. So in this example, we wanna declare a rainfall array. And in our array, we're gonna keep track of 12 months of rainfall. We want to know what the total is for the whole 12 months. We want to know what the average is for the whole 12 months. Um, and they're telling us to use this for loop to ask for the rainfall. So again, when we look at this prelude to programming specifications, because remember I told you I don't want you to think about pseudocode as a language because it's really not. It's just sort of a document of our algorithm. When we look at that, that pseudocode document of our algorithm, it sort of leads itself to using an index. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to get a snip of it here to get it out of the way so we can work on it. So I'm going to expand this and I want to go into example 7.2 for our Python and I'm going to say this script is example 7.2 rainfall amount. Let's say we're going to gather rain fall amounts for the year. So we're going to declare our variables. And we want our rain to be a list. <clears throat> I'm gonna scroll back up and see how we did that. We said the initial value should be within the square brackets. <clears throat> then the multiplier should be the number of entries. <clears throat> so our, for our rainfall array, I would like our values to be zero and we want 12 entries. We're gonna have a sum that's zero and an average that's zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna just do a for loop and we want to use a variable named k. And our range is going to be 0 through 12, because we have 12 months. Sorry, I put the whole thing in parentheses. That's a C-sharp thing. So I do that quite often. And Python doesn't like it. OK, so our for loop is going to say, 
we're going to use a variable named k and we want it to be in the range of 0 to less than 12. In our for loop, we're going to prompt for a rainfall amount. And our rainfall amount is going to go into our array at position k. So let's do an input statement. And our input is going to say enter rainfall for month. And then we want to include the month number. So we're going to say k plus 1. Because remember, k is starting at 0. So we wouldn't want to ask for rainfall for month 0. So we're going to add a 1 to it for that prompt. So that should say enter rainfall for month 1, 2, et cetera. Do we need to make that into an integer or something? We probably should if we're going to be using it to sum things. So I'll wrap that int function around it so that I'm changing that to an integer before I put it into our rain array. Now within our for loop, we can go ahead and add to our sum that new rainfall amount we just got. Let's run this and see where we are. Must be str, not int. What's on k? So our k variable needs to be a string. But that's not right, is it? We want to add to it. Should it be our k variable or the answer to that addition? Let's see if it likes that better. Okay, so for month one, I'll say we had four. I need a space there. But everything seems to be working. Um, so I'm going to fix my input statement. Now, I want to add that space, but I've got to be careful with my closing parentheses here to get the right spot. I know my last closing parenthesis was for my int function. My second to last was for my input function. My third one should be where I can add in a space. So that should give me rainfall for the month one plus a space after it so that the number that they type isn't squished right up against it. I'll test that real quick. There were a lot of closing parentheses. Yep, that looks better. Now we're not right up against the edge there. But I got a couple of months typed into my code, so I've got to fix that. All right, so now our input looks good. We're being able to summarize all of these rainfall amounts. Do what? Someone say something? Problem, problem. We summed them all. How can we calculate our average? Well, we could say that our average equals our sum divided by 12. And then they'd like to print out, I better put some comments in here. Calculate our average. Up here we're adding to our sum. 
for each month, and then we're divided by 12 to get our monthly average. Now let's print out each month. So we'll use a for loop, but this time we can say for each month in our rain list, We'll print it out, rainfall for month. Then we want to print a string. That is what? Our month plus when? Hmm, I'm doing this for each loop. And remember, I can't keep track of what my index value is with it. So maybe my for each loop isn't the best way to go with this one. Maybe I should just do another regular loop. I'll change it. So I'm gonna say for K in range of zero through 12 again. Now I can say rainfall per month and I can use a string of K plus one again. I'm going to add more is and then finally I'm going to print out the string value of our rain array at our index location k. Before we test it let's print out one final thing. I'm going to dedent to go out of our for loop and let's print the average monthly rainfall is plus our average. Now we have to enter a lot to get this one do all 12 of our months. So let's try it. Just put something in. Everything's looking good. Now it's printing them all out for me because we said in our for loop to do that. And then finally I'm getting my final average. Is everybody's working okay? No. no. No, okay. Let me unshare. Share with us. Instead of rain, make it range. Range, you yep. <laughs> Rain and range are just too close together. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I did everything for that first one. Try that again. Put another one in. So do you see it? Let's take a look at your code. So in your first loop, Zapka, we've got our for loop, but we can't calculate that average inside of it. So after that line of code that adds to the sum, dedent. So our calculate, our average, average. yeah. Oh, gotcha. Now, then the rest of it needs to be dedented uh huh. And then in your next for loop, that one line of code should be within it, but that final print statement should not. There you go. Okay. Now let's see how that. Okay, now it's working. Beautiful. Now you guys see how these for loops just work so well with the index values for our arrays that 
that's why sometimes it's almost hard to give you good examples, good problems to work on until we've got uh, kind of all of this knowledge because it all kind of fits together really well. Anybody else having trouble? Let's see what you got. Now, I want you to think about it for a few minutes. I don't like this month number. Whenever you print out each month, I would like you to change it so that you print out the name of the month, just a three letter name. So we would need to make a list, right? We, I'll help you with that. Let's say we could make a, a list months equal Jan, Feb, uh, What's the difference between the double? Um, For Python, there's not much. Uh -huh. Not much. For some languages, there's quite a bit. But for Python, it just doesn't really care very much. So we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And we'll make sure here. Now, one thing, I think that Python would get upset if I switched in the middle of this list from single quotes to double quotes but I've never done it to see for sure. But I think once you start on something with one of them, it would like for you to stick with that one. Other than that, it's pretty flexible about them. Now, I just wanna make sure I don't get any sort of syntax error on that. Looks good. So now, you have this secondary array that has these month, no, month values. On this second, level here, our second for loop where we're printing out the values, I want this k plus one to be replaced by that month's name. So I'm going to set my alarm for 10 minutes. Let's try five minutes. Let's see where you get.
Okay, how's everybody doing? We have this awesome new month array. So what do we do with it? Let me stop my share, grab it and show us what you did. You got it? Mm -hmm. Five minutes, not enough. Show us. So I almost did it, but it keeps on repeating. Oh, show us what you got. We want to see. Five minutes wasn't very long. I knew that wasn't very long, but didn't want to run us right up until the end of class. So if you guys were thinking about it, you were doing good. So I just did another for loop. Uh -huh. I wasn't sure what else to do. So, and then it like, it does it, it just keeps repeating. It. Oh, we get a whole bunch of them. That was a good way though. Go up and let's look at your code. Could you comment out that? extra for loop that you added just put a hashtag in front of it or something what do you mean? uh just put a pound sign at the very beginning of it okay. yeah right there that should do it now right there instead of where you've got the a could we put months so look at your print statement and where you have the A, instead of using that variable A, let's use our variable months. Okay. I think I that. That was good. And then instead of just months, now we need to put an index in. So let's use K, because K is already looping through all that stuff, isn't it? So let's try that. Let's run it. It's annoying that we have to type so many to try it. That works. So let's show everybody what we did. So that's the only thing we had to change. It's just in our print statement where we were printing out k plus one converted to a string to get that number. We can just change it to use our new months array and we'll just use k as an index into that new months array because we set it up that way where it's the right order. So that looks great. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I got it for the last one. Do you want me to share it? Or? Oh, that's okay. okay. No, that's great. Got it to work. So see how easy it is to just swap those in there. Let's look at this next one before we run out of time, because I want to make sure we've got a good start on it. Now, in example 7.3, we're actually using parallel arrays. We kind of just stuck a parallel array in that last one, didn't we? Because we just made those month names be a parallel array. It went along with our rainfall amount. But now they want, really want us to keep two arrays in sync. They want a bunch of names and a bunch of sales amounts. And for each salesperson, we're going to enter their name and what their monthly sales were. And then we've got some weird thing here. I don't know what this is, where they're saying, well, names not equal star. So I think they are just meaning, well, there's something in that names array. Oh, here it is. They want to enter a star when done. So when we're done, then we want to enter a star for the name and zero for the amount of sales. And that'll be our last entry in our array. We're gonna actually let that go into our array so that we'll know that we're done. Let me get a snip of this one for a starting point. And this one will be example 7.3 parallel arrays. Do 
before we go, I'm kind of going back and forth here, but I'm going to ask you guys for your opinion. Let's just do it real fast. OTC is asking, or at least my department chair is asking each instructor to make a decision for after Thanksgiving. This one is just sort of a survey for us real quick, because I just really want to get your opinion. Okay, so you saw the question, you know what it's going to be. But let's do it. So I need everybody to get into this Kahoot. So go to www.kahoot.it and enter this game pin. It's not a race, but I didn't affect the timing of the question, so it'll still be fast. <laughs> There's only two weeks after Thanksgiving, so whether we come back to class or work from home is more up to you than it is to me. So we're getting everybody there. Two, four, five, seven, eight. We're close. I think we should maybe have one. There we go. We have most everybody. I'm going to go ahead and start this thing and you just put in your opinion. You don't even worry about anybody else. giving us lots of time. Oh, we're pretty evenly split. So, okay, that's what I really wanted to see. And I think that that's good. Um, we kind of did opposite colors, right? <laughs> but we're pretty evenly split. So it's just gonna give me a lot to think about this evening before I make a decision. Hard decision. I can see good things and bad things about both. So I'll be letting you guys know. So be watching Discord because this is the last time I'll see you. So if we decide we're going to teach remote from after Thanksgiving, next that Monday after Thanksgiving, I'll see you on Zoom at 11.30 instead of seeing you here, okay? So be sure you're watching Discord for those messages. I'll try to send out an email. But boy, I know sometimes people don't really check those very often. Is it just for this class or is it for the entire school? For the class. So it sounds like you're going to have decisions for each of your classes to be made separately. So be aware of that because that's a really important point too. You might change your mind if all your other classes go remote. You might be like, no, we want all, all or nothing. So, you know, I think they're just going to see how that works. And some departments, you know, like welding, you guys, it's really hard to weld remotely. You know, where we've got it easy, man. We, the stuff we do, we're just set for Zoom. I mean, we're doing it pretty much on Zoom anyway, so we're okay with it. It's actually easier for me at home where I know where everybody is because then you guys can leave your mics on. And if you're having trouble, you can just yell out. You don't have to worry about interrupting the whole class because there's nobody else in my house but me. If you're like, I'm stuck, what is this? Then I could just say, oh, we have somebody who wants to share. And that makes us <laughs> worry about it. So it'll work out either way. Yeah, we've got it made because we're already Zooming and stuff. All right, let's make this stupid thing work before we got to go. <laughs> or at least close. Okay, so I want names and sales. Names, sales. Okay, so my names are all going to be empty, and I want a hundred of them. My sales are going to be set to zero, and I want a hundred of them. And we're just going to make sure that our arrays are the same size from the very beginning so that we don't have to worry about the user doing something wacky. 
Now along the same, as we're working, we want to figure out what our maximum sales are. So for our first one, they've got it kind of weird. We're going to try and do it the way the pseudocode is. We might decide we don't like it. We're going to print out a message, enter a salesperson's name and monthly sales. And then we're going to print again, enter star and zero when you're done. And then we're going to input into our names array. And that's going to be a position zero because we haven't started any sort of loop yet. And then our sales array at position zero. We're going to have to make that be an integer and input it. So we've primed the pump per se. We've asked for the first name and the first sales amount. So now we have those sitting in our array and we can go into our while loop. And the reason that we wanted to do that at first was we wanted to make sure that they didn't put a star in at the very beginning. Now, because we did it that way, I need to go ahead and create our index variable, instead of creating it in the for loop like I have before. So I'm gonna come back up here and set up a variable named k and set it equal to zero. And then instead of using zero for our index location, I'll use k, no difference, right? Because k is zero. But that way we're starting out using our index from the very beginning and now we can use our while loop instead of a for loop because we don't know how many names they're going to enter. They don't, we don't want to enter a hundred, right? We want to test this thing with just two or three and they may not either. So while our name entry at position K is not equal to that star, we can keep prompting for more. Within our while loop, the first thing we're gonna do is see if the sales that were just entered are greater than our max. If they are, we're gonna update our max variable with this new sales amount. Now we're going to update K and then prompt for a new sales amount. This time they want it to say enter name and sales. And then within parentheses, it'll say enter star zero when done. Our names array will set to the first thing they input. And then our sales array will set to an integer of the second thing they input. That's really going to finish up our while loop. So we'll put a comment there that that's the end. And then we'll print out 
maximum sales for the month plus our max variable. And then I'm gonna add a comment. Need to print out the name of the salesperson with max sales. How could we do that? We don't have time here, so that'll be something you're gonna to have to figure out. How could we save something in our loop to know who that salesperson was? Let's run this and make sure we don't have any errors before you're off on your own with it. Joe had 10, Mary had 20, star had zero, and that should end our loop. And it looks like the maximum came out right. So in your collab document, we'll need to finish this one, just fix it up, to where it keeps track of the salesperson also. I'll, I'll post something to Discord about exactly what you need to finish up. The 7.4 pseudocode and 7.5, we'll take a look at and I will message you on Discord because we might need some more videos for those before you can do them. So if we can do it that way, we will. If not, we'll make them unnecessary or we'll finish them when we come back. So just be watching Discord and I'll send you messages. Let you know. Yes. Sure, sure. Got it? Okay, have a great Thanksgiving either way and I'll see you after. Sorry, running you right up to the end. This Wednesday thing being off was not my idea. <laughs> See you later. Are we allowed to stay here a little longer? Or are we to yeah, we should be able to today. Should be any problem today. to expand on Colin's question about the um, quotes mm -hmm. whether single or double. So should we get in the habit of doing one or the other? I mean, you, did you say some languages have a preference? Usually you'll use the double quotes for the string uh -huh. and the single quotes just for individual characters, like okay. one character data type is the way they normally okay. do. So we have man, the some, of some of the textbooks use single through the whole uh -huh. thing and stuff. So yeah, I think yeah double quotes, quotes are more commonly are used. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. How's everything at your house? Good? I haven't got to talk to you in a few weeks. No, um, actually, my internet went down. Friday, we had oh, a neighborhood no. thing. Well, then my modem, it killed my modem. And so I didn't, they're not going to have me a modem until 
maybe tomorrow. Oh, wow. So I have no internet. I tried doing the sample test on, on my phone, and uh -huh. it was so small. I can't. Oh, it's just not it's working stupid. at all. No. So. We'll just yell because, like, if you, those, those due dates were just set to try to make you guys be done with the mm -hmm. stuff before Thanksgiving. Right. So it's not a problem if you need to extend something because I don't want you to be stressing. Yeah, the roofs, because I can't do anything because it's all on the cloud. The <laughs> no. I told you I hated that cloud. I know. <laughs> See, it's raining. <laughs> My daughter is so funny because she's the oh, she says, I do everything in the cloud. Ha ha, I don't need a thing in my house. She said, she has a MacBook Air. Yeah. Has MacBook. Well, then they lost power for like three days down there. And so she's like, I gotta get this crap off the cloud. <laughs> yes, you do. Did I, did I see a class where they study? <laughs> the whole cloud thing. Someone made that up for me. <laughs> it's about it's like Amazon Web Services like how to set things up for mm -hmm. your company. Like if they decide they don't want their own servers, right. they're just gonna run cloud-based servers. So, yeah. so I don't know how much she gets into why all our stuff is on the cloud. But Heather did not have one single movie even downloaded that she could watch. <laughs> she said, I had three days laying on my bed in the dark because I didn't oh have anything. Gosh, that was so funny. That's funny. The cloud is bad. But yeah, that class is real. <laughs> Tiffany's really excited that this will be the first semester that it's made. Yeah. So she'll probably do really good with it this semester. <laughs> She's really excited. <laughs> It'll be an interesting class for sure. Yeah, I kind of think I would it, but I don't it know might I want to really be good because you like knowing where your stuff is. Yeah, I think that might yeah. be. I mean, I still buy CDs and DVDs. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't download that stuff. <laughs> in general, <laughs> that's the whole world it. I want to be able to put it in the machine. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too. I'm kind of cut stuff, and so I have it. Finished and that's all fine, but to get it to play again, I have mm -hmm. it start over with the the variable I have is y in, you know, the first yes and no question. Okay. And it does that and re like redoes everything. I don't know well, so let's look at it. So tell me. I just have that comment it off. So. so go up to the top. So we would need to make this a while instead of an if. <laughs> 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 while, and then we need these things to be within the loop. So in done time. If loops could exist in a little while. Mm -hmm. And so an if doesn't create a loop. It just does a Oh yeah, it does it does So thing. you shouldn't need now these ones should be outside of your loop. So but these ones are so play again should these are play again. So why are we asking if they want to play the game if they just said yes, they want to play again? I guess that's, I guess that's not really. Helpful. I'm not sure if we need that or not. But then it doesn't loop back. Or doesn't Shouldn't that be up here above that? Would yeah. you like to play my game, play again? And so if I do that, I don't even need the Y2? Yeah. At all? So it's just Right, it. you shouldn't need it. Oh, okay. I was just overcomplicating it. Yeah. So I should be able to get rid of. Oh, and then, honestly, you can just print that message, can't you? Just have a great day when you're all done. Yeah, and I was having it as the end as well. Okay. Yeah. Now let's see what it does. We need while loops to do this before, but for some reason I was over. When you get all this code in there, it just doesn't seem the same. Yeah. <laughs> Runtime. 
another one of its turn. I don't know what that is. Did you did you lose your Wi-Fi connection? I'm so connected. you're asking for water yes. or no. <laughs> I, was, I was skipping that part. Oh, okay. So fiddle with it and see how, you know, change your different print statements if you wanted it to say something a little different. But that's the key kind of is just ask them again within the loop uh -huh. at the end of the loop. Within so the you're while updating loop. your yeah. variable. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. All right. That looks great. Awesome, thank you. Oh, nice. Everybody's just had some really good games. Yes. <laughs> really, really good. Are you going through everybody's, like, after, like, obviously it's a grade, but I've uh -huh. them and shown are you going through everything, with, you know, what everybody's done specifically? I'll look, yeah, yeah. just kind of a quick, quick review yeah. to see. I think it's really interesting to see, and this is the first time I've ever, um, given everybody kind of a longer time to work on it. So we yeah, so introduced new topics yeah. while it's been happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I don't know about and that one. The guy back there who had all kinds of for loops. I was like, oh my oh, goodness. Yeah, I, feel like he probably, awesome yeah. I feel like he probably has I feel like he probably has a little bit of experience. I think so. Things. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. back there working with them was that there was a little bit more experience. Yeah there yeah. so well you have a good time too. you too yeah. thank you I'm, I'm, are you guys gonna have a fun time yes we, we uh thanksgiving we have to go up to illinois to see her family oh you're gonna travel yes we are traveling yeah wow yeah, but we will do everything to be as safe as possible yeah so how far are you going uh pontiac illinois so pretty like, far yeah, it's right out of st louis um, a few hours out of St. Louis. Yeah, and not, not quite right. Yeah, yeah. and so, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's, it'll be the first time that we go alone. It's just like, I've gone with her twice, and um, we went with her parents the first time. We all got in a van, but now there are four grandchildren, you know, and all, you know, two toddlers and two newborns, and there are four other children, wow. plus myself. And then her parents, and so we don't really have the room, and they don't have the money this year, so we're going up alone. So oh. it's the first time we drive by ourselves up there. Mm. So that'll be interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just you guys and the baby? Yes, and my son. Mm -hmm. So yes, it'll okay. be it'll be interesting. Wow. At the very least. Yeah. That's really yeah. So we've decided against the traveling for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we figure it's more important to be able to do it at Christmas. So yeah. we're gonna wait yeah. until then. That makes sense. Not be, not, yeah. Yeah, double it up. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing for Christmas. We might go see my family who live in St. Louis, but that's always a small, you know, uh -huh. small, you just, the immediate family and, you know, that's always a small trip. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I figure, I've been a, a coder for a long time, so when somebody tells me that a pandemic went exponential, I know what that means, yes. and I know it's time to stay home. Yeah, I so that's what we're going to do, yeah, trying yeah. to not go into the pandemic game. Yeah. Have you ever played that old pandemic I game? Played, yeah, that, that <laughs> Most fun. people have. Yeah. That game's fun. <laughs> It'll be great. Will you guys be super careful? Yes, we will. Have a good trip. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Take yeah. everything you need so you don't have to yeah. stop. <laughs> We just, you know, our grandparents, great grandparents are getting old, and so we don't want to miss, you know, especially because we just had a newborn, you know. Oh, it's yeah. such a hard decision. Yeah, yeah, I think if they want to see the baby, it's the right thing to mm -hmm. do, you yeah. know. <laughs> well, you have a great day. You too. Yeah. You guys have a good Bye-bye. Yeah. Wow, quick question. I'm on the first registration by you. anything I need to know about it? There's someone I need to go see about it. On your way? To class, uh, register that they show. Your schedule? Yes. 
Um, do you have any questions about it or no, are you pretty? I see two um, screenshots from your clients that you didn't give me feedback. Um, you might have to say refresh right here. Because I had this um, passing rate and they let me restart the master. Nice. Because I have forgotten. Whoa, what are you creating? <laughs> it's amazing. As soon as you show me, I'm hoping I'm going to remember. <laughs> And have an answer for you. <laughs> hey, you helped me with your classes. I know. I just don't remember a thing. Okay. You told me to like help me do PDF stuff. Is it still showing like that? Yeah. You're still looking at online. And you sent it. And I just dropped it all. <laughs> but it still won't let you schedule it. No. And it's got to be. So it's like I said, that the last semester I got that pass on it. Yeah. So. Yeah, they've changed things. There it is. Let me forward this to her right now because I bet she's looking. Good luck. I will be able to write stuff in my next class. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get you fixed here. Hang on. I guess nine to five is not too close, is it? It's kind of like our election. It's not really that close. 
<laughs> so I guess that would say seated one. <laughs> I think that's what we should do. We only have two weeks left. I hate to switch it off. Okay, she said that prereq message shows up no matter what. Did you actually try to register and get an error? No, it, it didn't register. It just, it just did like that. So try to register. Because I think you did the other day and it. No, but I've been watching a lot of people. <laughs> Those are like the fanciest ASCII art I've ever seen. I can't believe there's shadows in the glass. Yeah. It did it. Registered. Oh, that was last time. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, oh, you got that one that was full. <laughs> no. Following required prerequisites, not following my grade. Okay, she says for you to contact the registrar. Do you know who the registrar is? No. I guess that would be, let's see if we can find him. OTC, who is the registrar? I think it's that one guy, but you've got it. It's mad at you. Our office maintains all student records. Okay. Okay, so they are where? Office of the Registrar, RCW 109. So um, when you go in that door, you know, go to the west, that side, in 109, I want to say it's just right inside that main entrance, just right to your left. So you're looking for the registrar and it also says the guy's title is call, one of them, college director for admissions registrar. So it might say admissions. Okay. 
stuff on there. And then you send me an email if you don't get anywhere and I'll send more emails and we'll get you in there somehow. Because I think you're okay. She thinks Dr. Ford thought looking at it, you should be able to register for it. So I think she just thinks that it's some sort of problem in the system. It's what? I'm trying to make sure I register for it before the kids get to see <laughs> I'm getting down lower and lower. <laughs> Get over there before it gets out of the way. I totally forgot to end this.